this a fringe group without specific leaders and goals? The Tea Party movement has had a big impact in this election year. There's now a Tea Party caucus in Congress, and now a Tea Party groups across the country are coming together ahead of the November election with a common goal, getting their candidates elected. The question moving forward, can the Tea Party maintain its momentum once the elections are over? Here now with some thoughts on all of this, Alexandra Acker, the executive director at the Democratic Grassroots Action Institute, and Ron Nering, chairman of the California Republican Party. Welcome to you both. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Hi, Ron, Emma. Hi. Ron, let me begin with you. A recent Rasmussen poll shows that Tea Party participation is up at the, as the election nears, with 29 percent of voters right now saying they are members of the Tea Party or they know someone who's part of the movement. What impact do you think the Tea Party can have for the long term? Well, I think that we see Tea Party activists across the uh, country and certainly across my state of California being very active and involved in our voter registration and our get out the vote efforts. We recognize that the world is run by those who show up and so there's really an, uh, the effort is a, uh, on full speed right now to make sure that Republican vote turns out. And we see Tea Party activists from one part of California to another being actively engaged. They're walking precincts, they're canvassing, they're making phone calls, they're volunteering for candidates. So they're really providing an incredible incredible amount of activist backbone as we get this Republican vote out toward, uh, toward November 2nd. Now, Alexander, the level of anger against Washington remains very high still. How frustrated, frustrating is it to you that Republican challengers who are embracing some or all of the Tea Party's agenda are suddenly threatening once safe Democrats and are now leading in some of these races? You know, I say bring it on. I think that um, we've seen the Tea Party certainly evolve into a movement. No one can deny that. Um, but the more Tea Party activists take over the Republican Party, the fewer elections they're going to win. Um, you know, I certainly don't want any of our Democratic candidates to lose in November, but I think one of the best things that could happen to Democrats is for some of these Tea Party candidates to win and, and be a continuing thorn in the side of the Republican Party um, and are a great way for us to show voters um, about the choices that um, really come out of these elections and to be able to say, look, you know, these are the candidates that Republicans are electing. Is this what you really agree with? Moderates are not agreeing with the Tea Party agenda. Um, and I think we're going to really see um, some stark differences come out of this election. You know, Ron, the GOP establishment in some states has had difficulty accepting some of the Tea Party candidates. Do you feel this could further divide the party after the election? Uh, I don't see that at all. I was just up in Siskiyou County in California two days ago sitting down at the table with Tea Party activists there. They're excited to help elect our solid Republican candidates, including our incumbent uh, member of Congress there, Wally Herger, as well as candidates uh, for local office. I think the Tea Party has uh, brought an incredible amount of new energy into the Republican Party. They've certainly helped to fuel this resurgence. And independent voters are supporting Republicans by two to one, even in our own state of California. So the wedge that the Democrats try to divide between independent voters and Tea Party activists simply isn't materializing. They're both supporting Republican candidates by very, very strong numbers. But let me ask you this, uh, <laughs> Alexander. Even though some Tea Party groups are setting aside their differences with the GOP and backing mainstream Republican candidates in the midterms, do you think it's an alliance that can last after the election if there are major differences that remain on issues like health care and cutting the budget? I don't at all. You know, in Ron's own state of California, when Sarah Palin's coming to town next week, his own statewide candidates are running away from her and not showing up at those events. So, you know, I think that this is a marriage of convenience and um, one that we'll see um, continue to be a thorn in the side of Republicans. You know, I don't see many of these candidates having um, mainstream values and a mainstream effect on policy. And, um, you know, like I said, I think having some of these candidates actually in Congress trying to pass some extreme legislation is one of the best things that could happen to the Democratic Party. All right, Alexandra and Ron, stand by for just a moment, and we'll be back with you in just a moment because we're going to focus on the issue of the fact that it's never too early to make predictions about 2012. And after the break, we're going to ask our panel to see who they may be eyeing for a presidential run. And this is one of the enduring images. The stimulus bill provided tax cuts for 95% of all working families in America. It was some $250 billion. Mr. Johnson says he would wipe out the whole Obama accomplishments. He would have to wipe that out. What they should have done is they should have come in first day of office and said, you know those, those tax cuts that are about to expire in 2011? We're not going to let those expire. We're going to continue those permanently. That would have created a great deal of confidence 
in the American economy. Welcome back, everybody. Well, there were very few surprises in the first debate between the two candidates for Senate in Wisconsin. Democrat Russ Feingold and his Republican challenger, Ron Johnson, sparred on everything from the economy to climate change to health care, with Feingold defending his vote for health care reform, which Johnson calls an assault on personal freedom. Feingold had been considered a lock to win a fourth term, but the Tea Party backed Johnson has pulled ahead in recent polls. The latest Real Clear Politics average has him up by nine points. The results are in, and a man who recently said he has no aspirations of running for president has won the presidential straw poll at the Virginia Tea Party Patriots Convention. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie leading the pack with 14 percent, followed by former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin and Texas Congressman Ron Paul. Yesterday, Congressman Paul appeared on America's News headquarters, and we couldn't resist asking him about a possible 2012 run. Here's what he said. Who knows? That's a ways off yet. I haven't decided that, but a lot of people ask me that. Uh, it's, uh, I haven't ruled it out, but uh, I'm, I'm far from, a long way from deciding that. And when we asked him about the straw poll results, he admitted, quote, Everyone has an ego. <laughs> well, those are just some of the names being talked about for a 2012 presidential run. Our political panel is back now with their thoughts. Let me ask you, Ron, uh, do you think Sarah Palin will actually be a serious candidate for president? And if so, can she get the Republican nomination? Oh, I don't know whether Sarah Palin is going to be a candidate for president. If she does run, it will certainly be very entertaining to watch all the liberals on that other network watch their heads spin around just because <laughs> she drives them so crazy. Uh, but I, I think we'll have a wide uh, field on the Republican side. Certainly, it's been very entertaining to watch all of the chaos on the Democratic side as we see the speculation over the last week over whether or not Hillary Clinton should run or whether or not Obama needs to dump Biden and put Hillary on the ticket. When you see that type of chaos two years out before a presidential election, I think it shows it's going to be very interesting on both sides. Alexander, he's calling it chaos. What do you think? Will there be that kind of chaos on the Democratic side? And will there be a crowded field of Republicans who may want to get into the sweepstakes? Where do you think independent voters are going to move in the upcoming race if that happens? Uh, you know, look, I think that the Republican side um, is going to be very fun to watch. It's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. You've got a bunch of has-beens and nobodies um, and Sarah Palin running for president. I don't see any real threat emerging out of this pack to, send, um, to President Obama's re-election. And let's be very clear, it's going to be an Obama-Biden ticket. Every Democrat has, um, including administration officials and folks at the DNC, have squashed that Clinton rumor. Um, I think it's going to be um, just amusing to watch the Republican ticket battle it out. Um, and I think that the Tea Party will have a huge influence on this election and will really splinter some of the Republican vote. Um, you might get to see uh, someone like a John Thune em emerge. Um, I think it'd be a huge mistake for Christie to run at this point. Um, but as far as Sarah Palin goes, you know, I can only hope. <laughs> Well, Ron, as she points out, uh, Alexander says she believes that the Tea Party is going to have a big impact on the 2012 race for the White House. Uh, what did you think, though, of the straw poll having Christie leading the pack, knowing that he is saying right now he has no plans to run? Well, Chris Christie is certainly a rock star in the Republican Party because he's come in in a state which was Democratic, which is still is Democratic. He came in and defeated an incumbent Democrat, Governor John Corzine, who was so arrogant he hadn't even prepared a concession speech on election night. And Chris Christie has taken on the liberal Democrat union establishment head on. He's pointed out how the public employee unions in his state have taken the taxpayers for a ride. They've looted uh, the public treasury for their own uh, selfish benefit. And they're unwilling to even uh, suspend taking a pay raise while well, Americans in the private sector continue to lose their jobs and Chris Christie has taken them head on and people have responded very positively to that. So it doesn't surprise me that Chris Christie would do well in a presidential straw poll. It shows that Republicans support his type of style which is to confront the, uh, uh, the liberal establishment straight on to really speak in, in, in plain language about the challenges that we face in taxes and the economy and how the Democrats in New Jersey and his state ran that state into the ditch and how we have to make sacrifices in terms of bringing taxes down, capping uh, property tax increases and bringing spending down in order to right the, right the, um, uh, the fiscal condition of his state. He's doing a great thing and that's why the public is responding so positively to that. 
Well, it's no secret that he is actually doing what he can to make a difference in his state, and he's not shy about doing that. Uh, Ron and Alexander, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us about 2012. Even though we haven't even yet had the midterms yet, there are those of us who are obviously interested in what happens even after that with the presidential race. So thanks for checking in with us about you. your predictions. Well, thanks, Uma. General Richard Myers may be retired, but he's still serving our military men and women. In a couple of minutes, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff will join me to talk about a new campaign for wounded warriors launching today. Stay with us.